Right, so this monitor here is um, my stepson's, and apparently he pulled it over and it fell on the floor, and that doesn't work. So I'm just going to show you what it's doing, and my intention is to pull it apart and see if there's anything that can be fixed. Um, I'm not confident, but you never know. Let's show you what it looks like. So you've got a bit of logo that comes up in the corner here, and you get this distortion. Um, I'll try flexing it a little bit and things like that, and it doesn't seem to change anything, or squeezing, or anything like that. It just doesn't seem to change anything at all. Right. Um, so that occasional flicker, I think it's searching for signals. But, um, and you see this gradient changes as well. It goes from a solid line to a gradient. So um, it's a bit interesting. So it looks like it might be a controller problem. I'm not sure. You see it's changing. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a mystery really at the moment. Um, I was expecting the LCD to be, to be cracked, but it doesn't appear to be the case. There's no signs of cracking on the LCD, so maybe something's come unplugged inside. So we shall have a look at this and see what happens. Okay, so I've rejigged the setup here. Now I've unplugged it. Now the thing with this, it doesn't appear to have any screws. Um, in the centre there, there is a hole. Let's have a look at this. That's just a gate there for injection moulding. So it's nothing to do there. There are no apparent screws anywhere. So I'm guessing I need to spludger it. Big Clive will be proud. Now, um, let's start at the corner and see how we go. See if I can get into here. It's a nice tight fit. It's well joined together anyway, but this doesn't want to go in. This budget may not be adequate. Let's try somewhere else. Getting something. So I just went and got my other spudger options. So let's see if I've got something here which will do the job. Um, let's try this one's a bit thinner. And get the thing out of the packet. Where's the end? <laughs> uh, there it is. Right. This one's a bit thinner. So maybe I'll have a better chance with this. Really all I need to do is figure out which way it clips on. Looks like it clips that way. Ha, here we go. That's one clip gone. Just one. Now let's try this one now I'm in. All right, so I've got the bottom frame released, but it's still not coming away. Now I think it seems like it's holding the centre somewhere. So I was looking back at the and this little rubber bung on the back here. So I take that out. Ah, yes. Okay. Here's a screw, just one, right there. I'll try to get this base piece off, and um, no, it didn't do anything. So I couldn't see any way of actually getting this mount piece off. I'm guessing it's screwed in. Ah, there we go. Now it lifts off. Right, yes, there we are, we're in. Okay. So yeah, that mount is screwed on from the inside. So I've got one screw. Holds the whole piece together. Um, 
So, as far as why this isn't working very well, um, this board may have moved. Um, that's taped, but this isn't all warped. It's like this isn't folded very well. So I'm wondering if this connector here is, is shifted. Maybe it's just pulled the wire slightly. Um, let's see if it is on the back of this in the driver section. Let's just peel this up. Let's see what's under here. So as, you can see, as expected, there's a system under there as well. Um, is that in shot? Barely. All right, so it's all, all the drive display stuff there. So as expected, um, let's see if anything looks like it's come off. All right, so, but obviously the signals come from this, and there was a little picture on the display when it first turns on. So I'm not entirely sure this is dead. I'm not. I, it could have damaged this driver board here. Um, do see if any of these lot have come off or anything? They look intact. They all look okay there. Um, so I might just check this end of the connector here. Let's make sure it's seated in properly. I mean, this tape is not doing much at all. Um, but the connector is definitely seated in okay. It's not that. Let's hold it back down again. So maybe it's something on this little board here, which seems to do everything. Now, um, yeah, that's the obviously backlighting here. It's got some power supply circuitry. Um, there's a crystal there. So I see if there's anything which could have possibly dislodged from a impact. So I might just actually take that board out. So there's only literally a couple more connectors and um, have an inspection of it. So that and one screw there. I'm sure I'll take the board out. Oh, it's soldered on the edge, is it? No, it's not soldered. It's just sitting there. So let's take the board off here. Don't applying too much pressure because I'm going to crack the LCD from the back. We'll see if we can see anything on this board. All right. Um, nothing appears to be dislodged. Now, because it's had an impact, you expect something you know, a larger component could have possibly broken the leg off or lifted a trace, that kind of thing. Um, the crystal looks all right, which is the main thing I was thinking about, but. Connector looks okay. Nothing obvious. So I'm not believing that it's a uh, impact fault as such. It could have possibly dislodged that ribbon cable, and that could be all that's wrong. Um, yeah. Have a look on the back. Is anything obvious on there? Power cable or power connection here. Not looking wonderful actually. I can see a break in those traces. Maybe I'll re, re solder that. It could make possibly a voltage drop when it powers on. Maybe it's confusing it. Let's re solder it and um, go from there. I think it's something you know, it's something to look at because I mean the power cord would have been plugged into it. Um, as with the HDMI cable, actually, those two cables would have been plugged in when it fell over. So, I could have been a VGA is using, I'm not sure which one he's using at the time. Um, there's no sign of stress on that one, though. Or net. So, power cable's looking a bit dodgy, though. So, I'm going to be sold at a power connector and just um, see if that changes anything and put it back together. 
I'm going to do this a bit ad hoc, I'm not going to clear everything out of the way, I'm just going to just tackle it up. There's only a couple of solder joints I've got to do, so I'm just going to work around the mess for the time being. Stick a bit of flux on there. This will be lead free solders on here as well, which probably won't help much. It tends to be um, inferior to lead solder, it fails more often. For Which to me seems ridiculous, so you've got a solder which fails, causes more electronic products to be put into landfill, and it's personally more ecologically friendly. I don't believe that for a minute. I really don't. I think the whole concept is flawed. If it worked fine, you know, if it was, you know, as on par with the, the leaded stuff and it, you know, it worked as well, it didn't fail as easily, this isn't desoldering, um, then, you know, it wouldn't be a problem, but this doesn't want to desolder. Interesting. But yeah, the, um, you know, if, it, if it worked as well as leaded solder then you know it wouldn't be an issue but it is inferior to leaded solder and so products fail more often because of the solder so instead of putting a little bit of contaminants into the atmosphere by you know having lead and the environment um, definitely lead came out of the ground in the first place so you know it's already in the environment it came from the environment in the first place um, but uh, this isn't desoldering that's really interesting. Um, I must be really much too cold. Right. Because it's got that leaded stuff on there. Um, oh, lead free stuff on there. So, you know, it's like a counterintuitive thing, really. If you're putting more electronic waste into landfill or into waste, isn't that worse than just using lead solder? You know, things now, instead of lasting 10 years, they last two years. Or five years if you're lucky um, and that's generating a lot more waste because you've got all the copper that's going back into the ground you've got all the processing materials from, from the manufacturing of the PCBs all that is going into the ground you know or, or into the atmosphere so where is lead, if, lead free an improvement you know it's not just the solder that goes into everything it's all the other stuff that goes into making that so yeah it's it's, um, it's flawed thinking it's just narrow-minded Lead solder is far more, far more appropriate because you get less stuff going into landfill. Yeah, sure, you're using lead. Lead's you know not the best thing, but well, especially when it comes to doing soldering. But the um, it's not a particularly environmentally good thing. But it's used in lots of places for good reason. And as I said, lead is a natural product. It comes out of the ground in the first place. So you know. It's like lead contamination, which is the issue. I don't really think it's really an issue, to be honest. I think it's all overstated. A bit too PC. The whole planet's going too PC, and the youth of today are turning to little shits. <laughs> they really are. Anyway. This is taking quite a bit of soldering to get this thing going. Because it's got that lead free stuff on there which I'm trying to get out as well at the same time you see it may not even be this it may just be this just that it looks a little bit bad and because of that I'm being a bit over cautious about it but uh, it's looking a bit dodgy as well just do it on here Anyway, how's the other side look? Well, from what I can see, it looks good. So, I shall whack that back together, I think, and see if it's made any improvement. Give it a bit of a clean up. I'll be right back. Right, let's stand this up. Plug it in. Anything. No different. Exactly the same, so I think it is fried. Um, but at least now I can touch the actual strips which go to the back of the OCD. Um, yeah, I think I'm pushing the power button at the same time. Let's put something underneath it. Right. Yeah, that's, that's fried. It's not going to go anywhere. That's not. 
She's dead, Jim. Um, yeah, the chip is getting a bit warm. That drives it. I think the chip is gone. So, yep, that she's a goner. Yeah, so another foul repair. Um, I've actually created a new playlist for foul repairs. Um, I haven't put much up there. I've got a few things there which are like in progress or, or, or haven't gone well. So um, I do have some foul repairs to put in there. Um, I just haven't bothered documenting them before because, you know, people want to see things. You know, they want to see success stories. Anyway, I'm having a coffee in a Danger Mouse cup. <laughs> As any grown man should. So, anyway, if you like seeing the things which don't come out quite, quite as right or, um, you know, are not the best videos because they couldn't be fixed, let me know. Um, maybe you want to see stuff which doesn't go well. <laughs> Alright, so catch you later. Remember to subscribe and that sort of stuff. Catch you later.